Let me bring the meeting to order. Welcome everybody. As usual, we'll start with public comment. Anybody has a comment they'd like to make, address the board, please raise your hand. I'll recognize you. You come to the podium. Uh, state your name, address, and uh, you have three minutes to say what it is you want to say. And uh, glad to have you. Anybody? Oh, I thought you thought we had one there. Okay. And we're going to move on uh, to select board uh, select board organization. First, first thing, elect the new chair. I will. I will make a motion to uh, nominate Selectman Bucky as I, our next chairman. I will second that. Congratulations, Selectman Bucky. Try and control your enthusiasm. <laughs> Didn't vote it on it yet. Oh, we did. We did make a vote. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I abstain. No, you abstain. You can vote for yourself. No, that doesn't look good. That's one good. I don't believe it. Now, do you want to stay in that chair? Is that what yes, you're... I like this chair. It's my favorite thing. Okay. All right. We're going to go with that. <laughs> so, the next subject uh, under item three is assignments for boards, committees, and commissions to the selectmen. Um, I personally, right now, am on the solid waste committee, the ag committee the Energy Committee, and although it is more or less uh, out of commission right now, the Racetrack Committee. We have not met, have not had any reason to meet, but I do stay abreast of what's going on at the Racetrack. And uh, I, as a matter of fact, uh, at some point I'd like us to consider the possibility of forming uh, another another committee but you are on for committees you're on planning you know the planning board I also the rec commission but I don't attend much you haven't attended at all dating a pact <laughs> no I'll stay in the planning board okay mm -hmm. Scott why don't we just stay where we all are? Okay. Seems to work. Okay. Um, I, I'd like the... Uh, Warren, how are you? Good, how are you? I'd like, I'd like uh, uh, just a short discussion on um, what we think about uh, something like a, uh, a development committee uh, something, uh, economic development committee, something that goes out and starts looking at drawing businesses, companies into, into lead. Uh, and, and that would be putting together a, a plan that also would include possibly what you would offer them, incentives and, and so on. Uh, we, we don't seem to spend a lot of time doing that. And I was just wondering what, uh, what you thought about it. I think it's a good idea across, I don't know how many years ago, 10 years ago, we had a half-time position of a person doing that. Oh, did you? And it, it was always a struggle. Mm -hmm. I mean, unless you're really knowledgeable and you know exactly what you're doing, uh, it, it's hard. Well, we're expanding, we're expanding our commercial zone, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we're, we're we appear to be having an interest in, in providing space for for uh, more more companies, uh, stores, or whatever. So the question is, you know, do you want to try and do something from uh, from uh, economic development, or do you want to just kind of go the way we're going? And so we have that's okay too. Mm. <coughs> I'm not speaking for the planning board, but at the same time, most of the activity Lee has always been passive. It's never been aggressive looking for anybody. Even though we've expanded the commercial zone, it just only 
four or five lots put a flame in. Yeah. There's not much build out left in Lee. Unless you take over a residential then you go in front of the zoning board or something and try to get a modification. So I don't know if it's worth the effort. Or that the possibility is we can always ask the public if they're interested in participating, but is there enough yeah. interest to maybe there's people that have knowledge in that general area. Okay. Um I'm kind of in agreement on the last thing you said. Let's see if there's any interest out there. Mm -hmm. um, because there might be somebody saying, geez, I'd like to volunteer, but I don't have any expertise in any of these things, but I'm a big economic development person. I don't know. You never can tell. You never can tell. Okay. Maybe we could put something in the inquiry so that we're considering it. Is there any interest yeah. out there? Denise? Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. um, the other thing I'd like to bring up is, <coughs> might seem kind of uh, out of whack, but uh, I'm staying pretty close to what's going on in, in the world of drones. Mm -hmm. And New Hampshire has a adopted a drone policy, as of course has the FAA under Part 107. And I can assure you that we are going to see more and more activity on drones, um, some just for recreational use, some for agricultural use. They've just developed a new drone for cross training. Uh, and uh, some for, if you would, uh, commercial expansion. I mean, people are going to try a lot of things with drones. There's some very serious results from exceeding certain limitations on the drone relative to altitudes where you are in relation to uh, airports and port zones and everything else. So, uh, I'm trying to stay up on all of that, and, and I'm soliciting the board to, uh, I don't like the word point, to, to look at me as their aviation point of contact, to keep up on this and to keep up on drone activity as it may be and may be in the future for the loop. Just so, I'm, and I'll stay up on it and keep you informed on what's going on and so on. I'm fine with that. Okay. Absolutely. Fine, Scott. Okay. Are you also, I don't know, maybe it's a rec commission question. Are you guys going to have a drone club at some point? Well, I think Larry has has uh, put out um, uh, a solicitation, if you would, about starting a drone club. I don't know if he's gotten any feedback to that or not. From, Nothing from to public. report at this time. Okay. Uh, New Hampshire. Uh, University of New Hampshire is offering a drone course um, relative to uh, rules, regulations, and then teaching uh, to be a pilot, a drone pilot. Um, so it, it's, it's looked to be a pretty nice course in outline. It's not a cheap course by any means, but hey. University of New Hampshire. <laughs> okay. So anyway, I'm, I'm working on that. Too. Before we move off this, I was going to ask Denise, the attachment we have here is about the Board of Selectmen. Are these changes your recommendation, or are these the changes that are already in here? These changes that in the operational guideline? Which one's it? There's some changes noted. Oh, it's all the blue crossed out. Oh, yes, those are Julie's changes. <clears throat> those are just small, either grammatical or changes that have happened over the years, such as highway supervisor, three minutes for the public comment instead of five, select board instead of select men, nothing substantial. We should in these. probably um, is there, to accept those. Oh, in the time of the meeting? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you would, want to, mm -hmm. you would want to accept them, but are there any other changes that you would want to make? To I looked through there, I didn't see any. No? No. You see? I didn't really look at them. I had the same question, you know, what are these? Because usually it's something that's been signed, mm -hmm. but that one was in the Oh, um, yeah, these were, for some reason, these, this is not the signed copy, but these were signed on June oh, okay. 8, 2015. Right. Yeah. That's so when these were first remember, accepted. Remember, because I signed them. <clears throat> Maybe for the next time we can take a look, and if there's any changes, and if it's fine, let's just sign it and yeah. update it. Sounds good. So we wait till next meeting. Thank you. I think this should go to Scott now, shouldn't it? 
Absolutely. But you were doing such a nice job. Pass the gavel. But you were running the meeting. <laughs> I've done everything that needs to be You're done. You're off the hook now. I can eat my second chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right. Uh, number four. Ronnie. So what did you want goals and objectives? Did you want to talk about those? Or did anyone have anything? <coughs> Not at this time. No, I usually time. do this every year. Yeah. That's right. Not at this time. You awaken us. We'll deal with it next time. Okay. Welcome. Luke Rodden, 14 L Lane, Energy Committee. Uh, I think it was about a month ago I uh, came before the board and talked about a blower door test for this. Um, and you seem to think it was a good idea. Um, we, we had one bid at that time from a company called GDS, they're very highly recommended. Um, then we, we sought out another bid from a company called Shakes and Shingles. They actually came and looked at the building, but they never gave us a bid. Uh, and then Denise found the company, and we looked over the bid. It was cheaper, but it didn't seem to really cover the full blower door test um, thing. So we would kind of like to go with GDS. The price is fifteen hundred, which is what we have in our budget. Uh, but since then, I found out that uh, we can probably we're probably most likely going to be able to get a grant to cover up to seventy five percent of that from an organization called CDFA, Community Development Finance Administration. Um, they have. They have grant money for uh, municipalities and energy projects. So uh, probably 75% of that will get covered. So we're asking permission uh, from the board to um, enter into a contract to get this done. We, we just contacted GDS, and uh, even though they gave us a bid six months ago, they're still willing to honor their price, and they said they can do it within two weeks. So, um, if I don't know if you need to have a vote on that. Or... Mm -hmm. Any questions? No, I think it's fairly straightforward. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, well, it's been already approved at 1500 for Well, it's a good budget. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. so. All right. Sounds good. Um, so, do we have. I didn't bring a copy. I don't want to touch it. All right. Um, so it's GDS? Mm -hmm. It's called GDS. So I think they're in Manchester. To grant the town administrator authority to a contract with GDS to conduct a floor test at the public safety facility. Said contract not to exceed the amount of $1,500 in funds to come from the energy to energy community's budget. <coughs> Do I have a second? Mm -hmm. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Yeah, oh. um, oh. I had a question. John Tappan, one eighty seven Stepping Stones Road. Um, I look at the quotes and I would like some explanation of why one is better than the other. Oh, um, well, for one thing, um, GDS came highly recommended by several, several mm -hmm. high level sources for us. And uh, reading through, it didn't specify what they were actually going to do. And so we, so we just thought we should go with the best, especially since we're going to get reimbursed for a lot of it anyways. Well, that was our opinion. I'm sorry. I think the one difference I saw, one specified that they would do a test after. Uh, at, at an additional $1,200. At an additional $1,200, right. I'm and sure the, the, the first guys ignored, would do it also. However, the other one ignored that completely, which it made more sense to me to do a test after you do the modifications to see if, if in fact, you, you achieved your the expected result. Oh, well, well the, the test, the second test is after you, after you do the work. Right, of course. Yeah. But... I mean, this is going to be before the work, so um, as it, we're assuming that the work will be done, and that's a big assumption. I mean, this is to see what's wrong with the building. If the town wants to spend the money, uh, that's, that would be great. In fact, I just found out about another way to finance it. It's called on-bill financing, where the power company actually pays 
for the 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 work, and then uh, basically your bill stays the same, but they get they get their extra payment for the work being done from the energy savings. So I I don't I'm not real familiar with that, but doesn't the town can I don't know. I don't know. It's just an option for the town. I'm sorry, John. Yes. Yes. The power company? Uh, you said? I, I was told the power company. The uh, elect electric power company? Yeah, the New Hampshire Saves Program. And what is their interest in a building that's not heated with electricity? I don't know. And then next I, question, had, I had my whole house insulated uh, and and I got a 50% rebate from uh, the co-op, and it had nothing to do with electricity. Okay, next question is, um, have you talked to uh, the occupants of the building? Yes. Um, police department, yes. fire department, yes. so that's okay for yes. shutting down the building? Yeah, um, Mary Woodward has been on top of that. <clears throat> okay. Um, I, I don't see the... the <laughs> Um, when I look at $850 or look at $1,500, um, I don't see in the quote what makes up for the, the extra cost. Um, just my comment. Uh, well, um, Mary Woodward's not here. She's the one that deals with the, the contracts, and she says the GDS contract has a lot more specifics. And, and, they be, and they're a lot higher, a lot more highly recommended. So that's that's our recommendation. Okay. Okay. Anything else? Um Are there any other board members? No. Good. All set? No. Good. Okay. And uh, I guess um, I was going to talk about an update on the solar mm -hmm. uh, possibilities. Yeah. We had a um, uh, a meeting last Thursday with a uh, representative from Revision Energy who did the, uh, the uh, uh, power purchase agreements last year. And um, I think I'm just going to do a little bit of recap of what happened last year. Uh, we, uh, we initially had a, uh, got a power purchase agreement for this building here, um, but there were a few, there were some problems with that. So we searched around for uh, other sites. Um, we got a preliminary quote on a ground mount nearby here, and then a ground mount uh, by the transfer station in front of that uh, garden area, and one for the transfer station roof. Uh, the one on the transfer station roof seemed like a good, a good bet. Uh, and then we had the Warren article, which gave the Board of Selectmen the authority to enter into a contract for um, a power purchase agreement either here or at the transfer station. Uh, then we have the vote. I went on vacation. Um, uh, <coughs> Julie Glover worked with Revision. And uh, a year ago, um, well, the way the power, per the power would have worked is uh, the transfer station array would have been a much larger array and would have covered a lot of the electric cost for both this building and the transfer station. Um, but the way it works is um, the power on the transfer station from the array goes directly to the transfer station. But the rest of the power just goes into the lines and you get credit for it. Now, a year ago, uh, they were... Uh, they were going to give us 73 cents per kilowatt for for the extra power. That's called net metering. So the net metered reimbursement would have been about 73 cents, uh, and that's that's kind of low. So so we just kind of you know we just kind of tabled the proposal. Uh, since then, there's been some new legislation. Uh, that says if your power, if your, if your array uh, 
is under 100 kilowatts, um, you can get full you can get full reimbursement. It's about 93 cents per kilowatt, something like that. Uh, and uh, when I found out about that, I looked at the proposal. This is the transfer station one would have been 112 kilowatts, but I just found out that that's 112 kilowatts DC, but they go a, they go by AC, and AC it's 86 kilowatts. So we're under we're under the limit, and we should get just about full reimbursement for our net metering. So it's kind of it's kind of good that we waited because now we'll get higher reimbursement. I asked about costs. He said that costs haven't gone up uh, very much, or they might even gone down a little bit because they've been able to find new suppliers with good, go good quality uh, yeah. components. And so uh, we've asked them to, to kind of redo the numbers on the transfer station power purchase agreement. And when, when we get something, we can, we can bring that and show that to you. Uh, we also spent a lot of time walking around uh, the transfer station to see if there were other sites available for maybe a ground mount. And um, basically the conclusion was that there, there might be other sites if we're willing to cut a lot of trees. So that's, that's the trade-off. And so he might be working up a proposal for that too. The wrap. Just to give you uh, just to give you an update on what's going on with that. Can you, could, you said seventy three cents. Is it seven point three cents? Oh, uh, point seven three cents. Point seven three cents. That's kind of expensive. So right, right. Point seven three cents as opposed to point nine three cents. Just a, uh, no, just uh, a decimal. Point. Yeah, no, something like that. Was it a dollar? I don't know. <laughs> I've been out of the loop for a while. Yeah, you'll see the proposal. It, cha it changes every time depending on the prices. You know, in terms of what we bought, we get for their power. Yes. Mr. Bennington? If they're going to be doing the proposal for the trees and stuff like that, uh, cut them down, have them do the proposal too on the install them up on the roof by having an engineer design and make sure it's structurally sound and also check the roofing itself because sometimes that roofing they have a, a time frame so we're in the 18 to 20 years right now so we got to look at the time frame in between so it's something to look into around that same time while they're doing the engineering inspection yeah. one of, well one of the things that the fire chief has told us there's no rule against it but he would appreciate it if we didn't put things on our roofs yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I spoke to the fire chief last year about that, and uh, well, being the metal roof and open, uh, it would it would be a lot better. Uh, it would be a lot better situation than than a normal. Right. I'm I'm not in favor of putting anything on the roof, anyways, because I think that's what we said. That well, we could we yeah we should get input on that too. We well, should get input I, I from the, at least two members of the board are not in favor. Of it, so I think you're wasting your time if you get a proposal for the, the roof. There's no benefit to it, really. So yeah, we're not going to go there. So please don't put any proposals in front of us that have anything going on any of our roofs. So okay. if you can take that one off, that would be great. And then we'll focus on the, the ground last point. Oh, okay. Thanks. Thank you, Luke. All right. No, good. We got this list together here that you requested uh, last week, two weeks ago, on what we're going to be doing for projects at the transfer station. I don't know if you had a chance to review that list, but we'll have it marked down to the completion dates. And a lot of it might be getting done within the next couple of months, or depending on the operation of what's going on for that week or that day during operation because we're open three days a week. So there's only two of us and then with the highway department they have their own thing and uh, we'll do the best we can in order to get it completed by those dates. And I don't see why at this point we won't be able to. And the other on the list on the back side I had I gave you to let you know what we do on a daily basis, a monthly basis, so you know what's going on over there. So we have a list of things that we end up doing during the day, during operations. There's quite a list right there we do. And then uh, monthly, weekly, we try to get into some of the PM schedule for like 
weekly or maybe two two week couple of weeks or depend on the conditions we try to keep them clean and uh, also get into the three month period and it all depends on what's going on during that day in operations in order to have the part timers work with us too at the same time that's the, that's the other half so eventually pretty much they get accomplished and the ones I have scheduled they'll be to be done we're looking hopefully by um, you know next three or four months to schedule it out couple of, couple of, well three things that I maybe I missed them um, on your list should be doing some research in terms of a generator Yes. At the transfer station? Yeah, I'm working on getting a contract to give me some numbers on that. Stuff. Okay, I didn't see that on the list, so maybe I missed nope, it. No, there's a couple things I didn't have on there just yet. Okay. Is uh, the con them and also doing the fencing too. Okay. The fencing is all collapsed, so we got to wait to see what we're looking at here. And so I'm coordinating with Steve on that, on the fencing part of it. So that's, uh, well, I got one more thing. So that was on my list too, but yeah. also the Energy Commission, uh, committee, excuse me. Insulating the whole tanks for the compactors, that should be on your list too. I had that, uh, I asked a professional about that. He came in and looked at all these tanks. Mm -hmm. Better off to get, uh, check all the thermals, do the PM on it, and don't put anything. If we put anything, put it right down just to block the wind yourself. Okay. Don't do that. Okay. So. Chief, had a question? <clears throat> we had a discussion about the generators there. For the transfer station, the generator we have here is overkill for this building. I think it's 100 kW, they call it. And we can actually do it. I was in, I've been in contact with Milton Cat a number of months ago. You probably do it with a 50. So rather than if they say, well, you need a 75 or 100 down here, my thinking was put a 50 here and take the 100 and put the 100 up there rather than spend the money and have one you don't need here. And, by a, the bigger one up there, okay. it might yeah. save you some money. But my comment on that is, is that, and, and my concern would be, we also operate the EOC and a warm space downstairs. Mm -hmm. yep. So luckily, so far, we really haven't had to <clears> utilize <throat> that part of the facility in, in that mode. But uh, if we did, where everything's fired up and so the on. The only thing that changed when we opened the EOC is some phone chargers. Yeah, you know? but if we go to a lower rated, if we go to a lower rated generator, mm -hmm. the question is how long can we sustain, how long can we sustain He's, that? He said we wouldn't notice the change. The, the elevator would still operate the way he said, all we need for the for this building and to operate the elevator and everything we need is, is a 50 kW. Um, he said that's way more than we need, so. Okay, I, I would like to see something in writing oh, yeah. that yeah. says. Mm -hmm. I can guarantee that. And even we had an electrician come out once because we're having a problem with the transfer switch. Uh, and when it does its test every Thursday, it was starting to, the building would shake when the transfer switch swapped over. And the tech that they sent out, uh, he adjusted it back, but he even made the comment that that was a little bit more than we need. Um, so when it's doing its switch, you know, it only requires this much, but it's getting this much. And it's really slamming that transfer switch in. So, I mean, I'm sure it wouldn't be a problem to have them come in and say, okay, this is what you use, this is what you exactly need. Okay, because we need room for growth, too. Mm -hmm. So, between the EOC and, and you know, okay. Well, let's see what these Dominic and research, because they have a lot of large motors. Well, I had uh, I had Cat come in, uh, the uh, sales guy, he did all the numbers and all that. He says, 100 kW for us is just more than enough for us. So, but it's enough to continue the operation at run it fully, and that's what he was saying. So, um, I'm getting other input too from other electricians. So I'll get that, get all the information together, and put, put everything, then I'll give it to you. Maybe you can have him look at the one that's here. Yeah, yeah. Because so, yeah. there's going to yeah. be a cost to take that one out and move it to your place, and then get a new one. So. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. And also, too, I think uh, I could work with grants on that, too. So it's something we can look into, too. Okay. And I'm, I was going to plan on looking into okay. as a recycling aspect of it. So, oh. Go ahead, Mr. Brown. So I have another question. The, the, are, are we equipped to do all this maintenance? 
in terms of in terms of equipment such as you know and, and, and what's the age of it i mean relative to i see you do a lot of welding yeah which That's i assume I yeah. fabrication yeah and uh you know i'm just i'm just want to be sure that we we have a plan in place yeah. to get the capital equipment required to do all these tasks yes i, I have all that okay yeah, so maybe two 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 projects I'm going to have to end up finding a contract to come in. I'll discuss it with Steve first before I even do that. So, and like the fire system, we have an inspection on the fire system uh, once a year. We don't so, need anything else. We don't need a lift or anything uh, down there to, to do any of this. Okay. Now, now if we Just take in, the, now if we take in the fire system people, they come in with their stuff anyways. So they're going to come in and do the run in the test and inspection. They might even incorporate them come and do it the same day. So they'll come in and do the whole thing once they call them ahead of time. Okay. Yep. Good. I have a question. If anything too. else comes up, I could just jot it down. While you're here, yeah. um, when I was at the transfer station the other day, well, by the swap shop again, yeah. people are parking 90 yeah. degrees into the road, which makes right everybody else to go way over by the fence line. Yeah. I don't it's know, stop this stuff, it's, it's brutal. It's getting worse. Yeah, I know. It's, and I just, they just had a meeting. I was actually, I brought that up to them last week. I said, listen, you got to come together on this. If you don't come together, they might, you might put a padlock on that door. You got to come together, all of you. And we got to police it all the time. You know, it's difficult. It's not an easy task for us. Mm -hmm. We're all around the facility, but we're relying on them to kind of work with us, help us. If you see anything, try to say something. Mm -hmm. But the signs, we get more signs up. We just continue doing that. And... But it's all about also direction too. Just thought I'd bring it yeah. up. You got no, the speed bump, no. which is perfect, but no. the person was parked over the speed bump. Right. <laughs> <laughs> a lot. Of I know they're half out. You know. <laughs> I know. We'll do the best we can to just keep them out of the road. And you know, they, it's common sense. You know, that's the only rule sure. that coming out. Mm -hmm. You got to at least stay off the road. But okay. obvious. <laughs> and it's still open just Saturdays now, still so, right. Well, the, next week they're talking about. Uh, open it up but they still have enough volunteers to keep it open for three days a week at this point yes. surely we'd have the meeting on it last week about it get everybody on the same page and just to see what we could do if you could open up for two days mm -hmm. just try that if you can't do it don't bother open it up to you make sure you got the staff because you don't have the staff and turn around about three weeks later you got to shut it down for a week what do you think is going to happen <laughs> you got it. especially now springtime's here we gotta, you got it you got to make sure you follow through and continue that all the way through so they know they know where we're coming <coughs> from. they're doing what they can to get volunteers to and it's posted so okay. each time we ask people we say come on come on down and stay for a while <laughs> come on down thank you Tony. Okay. anything else any other no, no. No. Sure. thank you Townsend Vision Committee um, had a discussion after the election about the town center project, um, and they have constructed this letter. And there's three recommendations that they'd like to give the board. So one of the things I asked for is a discussion about where do we go from here. Um, and the vote did not pass on Article Number Three. Um, so um, we need to decide as board where does the town go from here? Do we have you know, another attempt at this? Do we say enough's enough? Do we do some other kind of plan? But these are the recommendations from the, the Town Center Vision Committee. Um, the first one, it says, we recommend that the TCVC be continued and an updated charge be developed after delivery of item number two. Uh, it may be possible to continue the committee on the existing charge with additional instruction from item two, seeing no parole. Uh, item number two, we propose to provide the select board with a list of options for Town Center buildings and an analysis of the pros and cons for each option. This list of options would be delivered to board on or before June 1st, 2019. And item number three, uh, we request the determination be made on the remaining monies from ballot article six that was approved on March 13th, 2018 for design services totaling $115,000. There should be about $35,000 left of this funding 
And the committee would like to know if the remaining funding could be used to support further town center project efforts. So these are the recommendations from the town center vision committee. So we need to have a discussion about where we go from here. Yeah. And these are the committee's recommendations. Agreed. Uh, can I, I just want to ask a couple of questions. Sure. Uh, 35,000 left means the architect was 80. It just about. Just about 80. Well, we had and those two other quotes that we had to pay for as well. Yeah. Yes, that's right. Is there... How valid... Uh, the plans that we got for that 80,000, um, how, how do we see those? Are they still valid plans for... Uh, <coughs> in terms of the costs, the one thing that does work in terms of the layout for the library, that still works. The committee is still working on the layout for the municipal complex. Um, what was presented originally was not something that was workable. So the committee has been working with the um, Suckman's office, town clerk, tax collector, and the planning and zoning and building inspector to make that particular layout workable for those three departments. But that says, that says, that we were very dissatisfied with what we got from the architects, that we're paying 80000 Well, we paid a little over sixty. Okay. Sixteen oh, okay. four plus expenses. So, yeah, it was conceptual. Um, the prices we got were for that amount of space. Um, so what we put in it, you know, won't change that cost too, too much. But I think the conversation we have to have as a board is where do we go from here? Um, do we try to play it again? Do we do nothing? Do we do some kind of hybrid? Um, but the Town Center Vision Committee 1 officially depends on how you look at our charge. We were done at the end of the delivery session, but we kind of continued on. Mm -hmm. It says no later than June 30th. So one, the committee has, you know, we have to decide if the committee continues and what's their charge. Uh, and two, what is that charge? What do you want them to do? So that's the conversation we need to have to move forward. Well, I think it's, it's obvious to me that uh, I think the committee should continue. Uh, I'm not interested in dropping this at this time, even though the vote was a little bit lopsided. Maybe there's a different avenue or a different option to try to get some of this work done. So I definitely want the committee to continue. Obviously, we'll have to take the charge and maybe change a little bit, uh, see what's going on. I'll need a little bit of time to develop that, that piece of it. Um, it be, um, we didn't get any real comments. All we got was a vote. Well, about a week before the, the TCBC got lots of comments. Yes. Yeah. They came out of the woodwork, kind of. Not tons, but <coughs> we didn't get comments. So um, it would be great to have those you know, months before, but you know, mm -hmm. that's, you get what you get. Um, the thing in terms of recommendation number two, I don't know if the board's interested in having the committee do that, I think that would give the board some analysis in terms of the options as the committee sees them and the pluses and minuses of each of those. I don't know if that would be helpful. Um, I think it would I think it'd be very helpful. Okay. I think it's important since the, the group has that knowledge base. It's but, not like they're starting up from scratch. We started off with the committee before this committee that gave us a list of pros and cons relative to the buildings. Is that still valid? You're still going to take that in and look at it and see how valid that is, or are you going to start fresh? Or? Well, we're not going to start fresh. <laughs> there's, there's a lot of information out there. So, um, like one of the options that keeps coming up is Stevens Field. Yeah. We're going to give you analysis on that and other various options in terms of splitting. One of the things that we got is, you know, you gave us this whole big thing. We don't necessarily want to do the whole big thing. We want to do pieces. Maybe that's an option. We can give you um, pluses and minuses to that. One of the minuses is if you split things up into pieces, you're going to have ramp up costs that are going to be more expensive. Um, we'll see if we can give you a, a general idea in terms of what those extra costs would be. Um, one of the other things we keep getting comments about is the banister building. It's right there, why don't you just use it? Mm -hmm. And we've already done that analysis. We know right. what the issues are with that. And I think part of it is, this has been going on for so long, people forget why we didn't do certain options. 
like one of the ones in terms of doing Stevens Field, we decided if we got the church property, we wouldn't do Stevens Field. Mm -hmm. Does that still make sense? But we can go through each one of those options and uh, give you an analysis in terms of, and these are just the six people on the committee's opinion. Mm -hmm. um, and we can move on from there. But the committee definitely needs direction in terms of how you want us to proceed. Okay. Well, I, no, I agree with it. We definitely need to go forward. We need to come up with a product, mm -hmm. for sure, um, that we feel is at least viable and palatable to the, to the So, public. if the board's amenable, <coughs> will you allow our existence to continue at least until June 30th? Yes. Um, and number two, to provide you with these uh, options with the pros and cons by June 1st. We'll probably get it to you before, but I figured that was a doable date. Does that sound reasonable? So, yeah. I want to make sure it, it's, you mentioned two options. One, well, you know, possibly go forward with this the way it is again now, which is the whole package. I definitely want to see a different option, which is a phased option. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think you're going to get... We, we talked about more than two or three. You're probably going to get a few. Yeah, I appreciate um, it. And also, in terms of, like, for instance, the Bannister building, why aren't we doing that and give you analysis of that? It's um, good to have that when the question comes up again. Yeah. yeah. So you're probably going to get a half a dozen, I would think, mm -hmm. at least, I would think. Um, well, the, and they all they have to be viable. I mean, a Bannister building yeah. is a viable option. I realize there's a lot of reasons, money-wise, et cetera, et cetera, but the fact is the building's there. Um, and on option uh, recommendation number three, um, can we instruct the town administrator to look into that? Yes. I think it's possible that we could use it, but That's that whole opinion. issue, and I've spoken to her about this, and she was going to check into it at some point. But the no means no. What does that mean? Mm -hmm. um, because this particular thing was for uh, design services. Mm -hmm. So the vote wasn't about design services. It was about actually building it. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure. But I think um, we at least need to go to DRA and say, OK, this is a situation. Do you have any problem? Because I'd rather ask beforehand instead of getting a wrist slapped afterwards. Is there any other funding coming back from, from what we paid the architect? We need funding coming back. Yeah, i.e. they owe us money back for something they didn't do? Yes, yes. We're in the process of, there was an email that came from them today. Um, we're doing a little bit, they're proposing, but we'll see. I have to wait till the time of the back, because that's, we said she's in charge of the invoicing part of it. So I would like to consult with her before. So. Okay. But yeah, one of the things they said they were going to do is attend the delivery session, and they did not. Yeah. They just said, we're not coming in which, you know, that's part of that contract, so. Okay, okay with me. Any questions? <laughs> Comments? Amy Gazowski. Mm -hmm. Marie Gazowski, um, Library Board of Trustees. At our last trustees meeting, um, the trustees are very interested in moving forward in things that we can do with the library. We know that there are things that, that we can do before a big building addition or anything else is done with the town center. And we'd like to see if we could um, schedule a meeting with the Library Board of Trustees and the Select Board so that we can look at what we think we can do and get your approval. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. We're always willing to listen. Absolutely. Any other questions? No. Um, item number seven. What? I'm sorry. What does she mean by schedule a meeting? Like a board board and a trustee? select board meeting and a membership of the library right. yeah. trustees. Like on, are we going to discuss that, or are we going to like is that a Thursday, a Wednesday, when you're free? What? How is that going to work? It could be a Thursday. Yeah. But I'm free. Find out. Let's but find out what dates are available. Yeah. And, uh, okay. You'll contact us. See so where we go from there. It doesn't have to be a board of selectmen night. Okay. Okay. Oh no, it would be like a work a work session. Work session. We just saw it as an informal thing where we can not be yelling at each other exactly. or straining to hear with bad microphones. A round two. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Right. And number seven. Denise, the bell. <clears throat> oh, yes. Oh, yeah. 
Well, I didn't have a whole lot of time to concentrate on this in the last week with Julie being home, but I did manage to get over to um, Epsom Central School and see their sign that they have from the company that we were looking at, um, liquid TV liquidators. And um, this, these are pictures of their sign. They, they did not do the whole sign, they just did the electronic part that you'll see a closer picture. There's a whole bunch of them, and you'll see a closer picture of the electronic portion. There's two sections and they're back to back, put together, and connected with wires so you can work wires. with both sides. <coughs> and you can make them different or you can make them the same. This is a six year, probably a five or six year old model. Hopefully they've come long, you know, further than, because the principal still has to go outside. I mean, and when I say outside, I don't mean just outside. He has to go all the way to the sign to program it, mm -hmm. <laughs> which defeats the purpose. Defeats the purpose of what we're trying to do. Yeah, what we're trying to do. But um, he's very happy with it. He loves it. He says it's great, he, you know, as far as, but it's very archaic with the, it's like having an old flip phone, John, with the. What are you saying, Denise? <laughs> when you have to push all the buttons to get it to. Oh, jeez, I left to, it at home. To, yeah, to text, to get it to. But, but I'm hoping that it's, that they're. The lights are around. Oh, no, 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 they're not. It, that's how, what it happens when you take it through a cell phone. It's weird. Yeah, it looks like it broke. It's yes. not broke. It's perfectly fine. But that's what happened when I took the picture through my cell phone. And you could see it. You it was very odd. Use a flip phone. Well, Mercury's in retrograde, so maybe that has something to do with it. But you look through the picture on your phone, and it's all wacky through your phone. And then when you take the picture, that's how it comes out. I have no explanation. But the one you want to get is programmable for Wi-Fi. <clears throat> well, I'm hoping, or... well, that costs extra money. That costs like 700 or 800 more dollars to get the Wi-Fi program on top of it. But I just wanted to go see what, you know, what it looked like and how it was and if they're happy with it and stuff like that. But that doesn't include all of the costs don't include the structure that's around it or the electrical that goes into it. Um, so I still have more work to do on that. On the way back, I noticed Co Brown sign. Have you ever seen that? Mm -hmm. That's gorgeous. Call, called them, talked to them. I won't even tell you what they paid for that sign. But they got it from Barlow Signs International, which I had reached out to a, a while ago and got a quote and everything, and they're very pricey. But I thought I'd try them again, so I left them a message. I haven't heard back from them. Maybe they remember, but we'll see what they say. But they did Co Brown's entire structure. They did the whole frame, everything, the brickwork, the woodwork, everything. They just came and did the whole thing. And it's much, I mean, the, the quality product is night and day, but um, so that's all I, that's as far as I've gotten. I What's required to, to program this sign? You have to walk out <clears> to the <throat> sign. You have to walk out to it to get close enough, but to do what? To to program it with the oh, it's a handheld. Oh, it's a handheld device. Yeah. That they have. it looks like a remote actually. Okay, I got you. But you can upgrade from that. Um, I don't know. They were on a budget too, so they didn't. Get, maybe they didn't even have the wireless back six years ago when they first did it. They have it now. I just don't know how far it will go. I'm sure. I'm thinking it would go. The distance we need. Okay. So this but, is just. But you don't have to access the sign. I mean, I. I no. I, I you just stand. No. You just have to get close Standing in two feet of snow. Well, I'm sure he's standing to... in some snow when he goes out there. Mm -hmm. But okay. I still didn't have anything bad to say about it, which surprised me. You think in today's wireless capability, we wouldn't have to stand in the snow anymore? Right. You got it. At all. At all. So does anybody in the area have one of those that is wireless? No, not that I've found. I can call the company and check if anyone's gotten them. Since I talked to them in the fall, maybe someone's, maybe someone's gotten one. Because one of the things that, is, if I remember right, the last time you came, you said there was an issue in terms of how far the wireless would work. Right. And so, I haven't narrowed yeah. that down yet. Right. And I, Steve didn't get back to me when I asked him in the fall. He probably thought, well, we have a lot of other things going on. So. Chief. Chief. 
But Barlow's is completely wireless. She sits in her office and does it well, be. from in there. The the state has them all over the state now, and they program yeah. them right from Concord. Might be worthwhile looking on the state bid list. There might be a company on there mm -hmm. where they're purchasing theirs through um, and go that way. But I mean, from Concord, they can do the ones on the Swallow Turnpike. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Oh, Miss Lang. Um, just to let you know that we did get a re reimbursement check for the. Um, using the school, we got it today. Which was it? Wow. Two hundred ten. Very good. The um, I had a conversation with the superintendent as well. Uh, he is going to work up for us a little, little letter of agreement, so that he said when I spoke to him about it, he says, "Well, what if the board all dies?" And I said, "Well, then we're kind of like in problem." He says, "What if what if I die?" And he says. For longevity, let's have this in writing so that down the road we have this in place. And I thought that was really reasonable. I'm good at it. Um, so he, I asked him, and he's going to work up a, a it's not going to be lengthy, just agreement in terms of when we use their facilities and vice versa. We're not going to be charging ourselves back and forth. Okay. Good. 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 That's good news. Anything else, Denise? Nope. Uh, number eight. I move to accept the consent agenda as presented. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? No. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. started somehow getting into was, uh, as, as you might know, or people might know, that Lee was designated as the number three best place to live in the pandemic. Uh, I, I, I called Karen and asked her to find out, one, who was number two and what the criteria was to go from number three to number two, what would it take? Would you rather go from three to You're one? No, no. I don't want to go to number one okay. until I see what it takes to get to number two. Okay. Do right. you want us to go to number one? We'll go to number one. But let me tell you how you, <laughs> let me tell you the rest of the story. Number two, uh, Karen called me today. Number two is Madbury. <laughs> okay. And, no. Number two is Madbury. <coughs> so the question, of course, is why is Madbury? On what criteria was Madbury <coughs> better than Lee? There was two, two things. One that I could understand easily was crime. And a, yeah. But you're gonna love, you're gonna love this one. Nightlife. <laughs> Nightlife. <laughs> Nightlife. <laughs> Serious as a heart attack. Nightlife. <laughs> and the reason, the reason they get points for nightlife is there's a, apparently a small piece of land that juts out and touches the back door of a Dover Moose Club. And therefore they qualify for more nightlife than we have. <laughs> see, we got five <laughs> <laughs> I feel as though we need to step up to the plate somehow or another. My first, my <laughs> first, nice <laughs> my, my first inkling like was this. hey, uh, in a couple, every now and then I stop by Flag Hill Winery mm -hmm. just to see if everything's okay. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, and <laughs> take that in a minute. Uh, uh, they have changed the dining room around. They have a nice big fireplace in the dining room now, mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. And I've always wondered why they didn't open in the afternoon for, you know, have some cocktails and appetizers and so on and so forth. So, 
if it's okay with you, I'm going to have a discussion with Brian to see if he's willing to do something in a late afternoon environment, whatever, that would qualify us for some form of nightlife. <laughs> It's not uh, night. I mean, you know, yeah, but really, we'll... the Moose Club in Dover. <laughs> I mean, no. We, I know we can do better than that. So, anyway, I wanted to bring that up. <clears throat> One of the things, just to let the board, speaking about Mr. Brown's visiting the Black Hill, I think you're checking something else besides. I am. You're doing okay. I am. Um, uh, Mr. Um, Ferguson got permission in where the old Cow Palace was. Uh, that is going to be a, an ice cream place, and also he's building cabins out back there. I think there's like 12 of them. Uh, so therefore, guests when they come, when they have weddings, can have their guests stay mm -hmm. over there. It's totally in Epping, has nothing to do with Lee, but just as an FYI. So. That's good to know. Great. So you can go down there and get ice cream. I don't know. He so started, anyway, I started this way. One of the goals, when we talk about goals, is the goal right there. to get to number two. I see. Okay. Who's number one? Oh, well, who's number one? That's well, a good that question. Be the goal for the following year or whatever. Yeah, I don't know what it takes it's to get Hanover. to number one. Hanover. 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 We'll never get to Hanover. What, what is the source of this? I'm sorry? What is the source of these ratings? Um, it's, a, it's an outfit called Niche. N-I-C-H-E. Hmm. Huh. Mm -hmm. Do we get a plaque or something so we can... Yeah. <laughs> I think over the last five on, years we we've been to, in the top five. Yeah. Well, we ought to put it on the electronic sign. Welcome to <laughs> number two. <laughs> number two. Voted number two in our niche. Second runner up. <laughs> just, just be careful because the more people that come in bring more kids, which means our costs go up. So we we'll also take taxes. Yeah, but once you have, what is it, over 1.2 kids, it costs us more money than you Well, that's fine. Time. If you want to go on a zero, we won't replace anybody that leaves. <laughs> <laughs> Keep it going. A second hand used one? So I guess I go here. Yeah. Oh, I didn't use one. You want me to sign down here where it says yep. assessor? Okay. Yep. Sign all three. No, just yeah. Huh? Just one spot right in the middle. Yeah, no, I've already signed the wrong one. <coughs> well, these guys got to sign.
You've cut into, into my mad berry party in time, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I move to enter into a non-public session, New Hampshire RSA 91-A, colon 3, item 2, sections A and C. Do I have a second? Second. Mr. Brown. Aye. Mr. LaCourse. Aye. Mr. Bugby. Aye. Both, um, both minutes from the non-public session. Do I have a second? Second. Um, any discussion? No. No. Uh, Mr. Brown? Yes. Aye. Mr. Mr. LaForce? Aye. <laughs> Mr. Bogby? Aye. Anything unfinished business? 
speaking. Uh, one thing I'd like to just have a short. I I was going through uh, Nottingham's ballot, and I, I was very interested to see that they were buying. If you look at their shopping list of capital equipment, they were buying just about the same thing that we had on ours. Breathing apparatus for $195,000 in their case, um, extricating equipment, et cetera, et cetera. And it, it sparked me again that uh, there is a lot of commonality in, in uh, certain areas that we have with other other surrounding towns that we might be able to take advantage of through co-oping. And additionally, if I remember right, when we looked at the NHMA recommendations on legislation, there was a, something in there on co-oping co also mm -hmm. to approve. Mm -hmm. So I would, I would like to um, be able to just explore that, if it's okay, uh, and see if there is any opportunities that we might might say, yeah, we could, I think there's opportunities in the solid waste area, uh, certainly in, in acquisition, purchasing of equipment, so on and so forth. And I think there may be some other services that between Madbury and Nottingham and Barrington and ourselves, we might be able to, to uh, take advantage of some of that. Was it the same equipment? It's the same equipment. Same exact? So Best I could tell was the same, I, I would explore that obviously, but yes, it was a, a breathing apparatus for the fire department, extricating equipment, they're also looking at trucks, which we didn't look at trucks this year, um, etc. It would just be interesting to see if you and the chief, Chief uh, Nimick, could contact them and say, because they haven't bought them yet, they can't buy them until July 1st, and right. just say, you know, we're buying 20, you're buying oh, 20. Exactly. Maybe the company will give you another discount. Exactly. Well, you know, if you go, if you go to a oh. company, if I remember right, the apparatus was like seventy thousand dollars a piece. Mm -hmm. uh, if you go uh, to that company and say, "Okay, we're going to buy twenty versus mm -hmm. uh, you go there and you say, "Okay, we're we're willing to buy four. We can buy forty, a lump sum of forty, all the same configuration. It's you know, it's great. It's everything they want, and they get. So I, I think you're in a good negotiating position to try and lower the price some, mm -hmm. and uh, do the same with other towns. I don't know, I'm assuming Madbury will too. Um, the chief has told me on multiple multiple times that uh, everybody that's on a mutual aid program with us mm -hmm. try and buy the same common equipment so that, that when mm -hmm. they walk up to somebody else's truck, they know where the valves are, et cetera, et cetera. And then that goes for a lot of equipments. Uh, and I think that's true for, you know, even outside of uh, the fire department, but certainly also for mm -hmm. some of this stuff, for the police cars and the police cars themselves, etc. So it's well worth exploring. Yeah, obviously. Absolutely. absolutely. Good. Thank you. Good. Anything from the planning board? No, no planning quiet. Board? No. I heard that um, the appeal was filed with Bedrock. Yes, it was. So they were like shut down. For shut down. What would happen with that? The, the, what is it, the abutters? The abutters. Filed an appeal. Oh, yeah. So I guess it's in the court's hands. Well, everything stops. So yeah, we're stopped. in the state right now. Mm -hmm. So, okay. All right. Anything else? No. We're good. Um, I move to adjourn. And a second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye.